This is the Connecting to Spirit podcast with your host, Susan Norton. Here, you will discover ways for you of connecting to spirit. These are true stories. Welcome. Aho. Hi, you guys. I can't believe I'm here in the middle of COVID in Ithaca, New York. I'm actually in somebody's house with an actual human being and... This happens to be um, a gentleman, a friend uh, that I've worked with for years. His name is Bob Cross. Extraordinary human. I admire him very much. And when we had our fires live, he was a fire keeper. And I also consider him a wisdom keeper. And he's humble and shy. And I just thought, you know, I'm going to ask him some questions today while we have this time together because God knows when I'll be with a human being again during this COVID season. So, and today happens to be February 6th, 2021. So, um, hey, Bob, like, like, how are you doing, like, like, with, how's the COVID affecting you? Has has it changed your life at all? Or are you still able to do any kind of spirit activities or seeing your animals, power animals? It's allowed me, actually, it's gifted me the opportunity to be more spiritual, I think. I'm doing a lot of um, reading, a lot of praying. Um, I can't physically do as much for other people, but, um, you know, I found out that on the Internet I can make donations. I support Plan for Change. Um, I can make donations to little ones around the world right safely, you know, and um, it's, you know, I can't count on the physical distractions, like I can't go to Wegmans four nights a week, you know, or go here and there, it's, you know, to sit here and sit here with spirit and um, reading a lot um, on different spiritual paths and just experimenting and just, you know, a lot of, um, I think, trying to channel positive energy out into the world that um, I believe it needs. And it's just, I don't feel that isolated. It feels like I've become more useful really through um, channeling spirit, being in touch with spirit and I'm just seeing these little ways that I can participate and uh, yeah so and you mentioned that so you can't do some of the physical things that you did before like a year or so ago but would you say there is any gifts in that is there anything that like come is there a gift in that just curious you know, it's fun. one of the things I miss the most. I'm a handshaker. I'm a hugger. I'm a shoulder patter. That was really how I felt that I was being comforting to other people. That was something. And I haven't, except for three nurses, I haven't had any physical contact since last March. So it's, I've had to relay on rely on yeah. prayer, you know, and the times that I'm out and about, you know, I go occasionally to the store or whatever to, I guess, make eye contact with people. I'm um, try to, and it's amazing how you communicate with just eyes, you know, and see people that um, need that eye contact sometimes, you know, or just um, kind words and you know, I, I can't use here on the phone. I do some texting with people that um, need to be texted. You know, people that kind of um, other people aren't in contact with that much. And it's just um, finding other ways. It's amazing how we can adapt if we look. But, um. 
So, because I haven't seen you maybe for four, maybe months or so. I think I saw you a while ago on the back porch of yeah. my house. Mm -hmm. And so, Bob, I must say that you are actually looking like pretty good. Your hair is long, and uh, which is so groovy. And um, and I'm just wondering if because of the prayers and the work that you're doing, that that's kind of, maybe you don't see it, but you kind of have like a nice glow. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, I was like surprised to see that. Um, I don't know, it seems like that when people are spiritual and caring people that they become more beautiful and more radiant and when we think of others like you are. Yeah, and uh, I think when we're in that place or you're in that place or different people, like Wayne Dyer comes to mind, and um, and I just see that in you. So it's really beautiful to like physically be here, you know, in the same uh, beautiful setting. And um, your your home, your little nest is just glorious. I've never been in here. This is a treat. And um, yeah, and that those, there's gifts and all this. And I know... Um, and if you can find the gifts, then you're you're rocking the life. You're rocking the life. And um, so it's uh, it's amazing and amazing how many lives we touch. You know, we don't even know. We don't even know. And um, do you see or sense any um, guides or helpers with you or how do you know you're doing the work is there any <laughs> i'm just curious i mean you reintroduced me to black jaguar i mean that i met him years before i met you i didn't you know kind of went out of mind and then I don't know one of the first times that we talked you said that you saw him in my life so boom he's there and he's a great guy you took me to visit him in the Amazon I've been in his body I've been oh, out you know and he's he's great and um and then that friend that we talk about is Coyote I think Coyote for being the greatest teacher I've got because um you know he's the trickster he's um he makes life interesting. You know, when I accept him, as I welcome him into my day every morning, and he makes his life interesting. You know, I make plans, they blow up. So, you know, that's part of the plan. Then there's always another, an option, another plan that I can take. And um, yeah. I like that playful part, you know. My experience, he, he ate two of my cats when I lived in Spencer, you know. But that's what wow. coyote does. They run around the hills wow. and they eat cats, you know. But it's um, he also allows me to go into a lot of different directions because he blows up the ones that I head into that I think are important. Boom, they blow up and I found some great, you know options to those over the years and, uh, and I'm not frustrated it's kind of you know like a lot of teachings once you accept pain into your life it loses its power once you accept, once I accept frustrations into my life they lose their power it doesn't mean the sun's not going to rise it doesn't mean I'm a total <laughs> screw up <laughs> It just means, you know, that's life yeah. and it's okay. And and uh, you've been, I know that um, because you're more like inward, you're doing readings, you're doing th readings and studies that you haven't had time before. So that's kind of a gift. Is, has anything come out of your reading or your studies, anything new that you've glistened from this? This is an old one, but it's one of the things I'm, I have a strong Christian base as far as following Christ. Mm -hmm. And I like one of his teachings. When he first started teaching, he went after the, the educators, the teachers, Thanks. the ones before him. And he says, you're all ritual. There is no spirit. 
and he taught spirit. And that, to me, is the most important thing. I mean, rituals, some people need them. They're nice for some people. I don't, you know, I want the coyote, you know, right. give him a spiritual, you know. It's just, um, you taught me, Susan, that listen over the shoulder to spirit. That's what I need. I mean, the rituals are nice, but rituals fail me. You know, it's like, well, walk around the block, I can't do that anymore, so what's the option? Sit here and be grateful for what I can do, you know, it's, and that counts in the adaptability of, you know, listening to spirit. So, like, a ritual might be, like, attending, like, saying, like, systematic prayers or, like, mm -hmm. uh, repetitive actions and, mm -hmm. like... Um, but without the meaning, like a ritual would be. Uh... I don't have to do the certain action for God, Spirit, Allah, okay. Krishna to love oh, me, okay. to accept me. I don't have to earn there you go. their love. Oh, okay. It's to open my heart to listen. It's just, okay. that's just me. I know a it's lot of like people. It's just like direct access, open. Like a lot of people find comfort in rituals. That's good for them. But yeah. I just, I don't want to get the feeling that I have to do this to get spirit's love I or see. acceptance I or see. God's love this or is a new acceptance. Way. It's just you don't have to earn it. Heart. You don't have to do yeah. 10, you know, certain prayers or yeah. kneel for an hour on a hard surface yeah. or... I like the word grace. Grace. Unearned and undeserved gift. Okay. My life is unearned and undeserved. It is a gift. And if there was any, you know, people out there feeling disconnected or alone or unloved or abandoned or... Maybe they're just so stuck in their in their darkness that they can't find a way out. Is there anything you would tell them or let them know that they might be listening right now? Is there anything you'd want to tell them? To me, it's the spirit that connects us. You know, the spirit within our hearts, the spirit within your heart, spirit above, spirit below, spirit all around us. That, to me, is a connection. That's love. You know, spirit is pure love, um, unconditional. And um, if I open my heart, if I open my mind to spirit, it connects us. We've got that in common. Yeah. Okay. And it never goes away? Oh, I can throw it away if I choose to, but um, I don't choose to do it as often okay. as I used to. Um, so even if they've thrown it away, or even if I've thrown it away, it will take me back. Like, I can be welcome back. There's no... I will push spirit away. Spirit doesn't push me away. Oh. I will shut the door. Okay. And how do you open it again, if you remember? I know now you're really kind of in spirit. I can see that. Surrender. And how do you opening surrender? Opening up and sweet surrender. Opening up and sweet surrender. Opening, opening, you know. Just, uh, okay. I was using that earlier, you know, just that short prayer. Ego, leave, spirit, come in. Ego, you know. How was that practice? What did you do? You breathed in, breathed out. What, how did you do that? Because you, um, or just so you guys know, earlier we were making some recordings and Bob was doing like a, this, like he's closed his eyes and he did something. And all of a sudden the words that came out were just spot on. So I'm just going to ask him, well, what was it? Because I don't know what he was doing. Do you remember? Can mm -hmm. you describe it? Maybe something we could try. You know, that's... I think I've said it before and I'll say it a lot, but that's... The most incredible gift and useful gift that you taught me, and that's that listen to spirit. And I can't listen to spirit if my ego's roaring, oh, you know. It's just, I see. 
So you have like a little mantra, like ego out, Mm -hmm. not kicking out, but just like, just pause for a minute, ego, Mm -hmm. spirit in. You go out, spirit in Mm -hmm. with your intention. Is that what you were doing when you closed your eyes and the beautiful words came out? All right. Anything else you want to share before we uh, say goodbye to our listeners? So in case you were ever wondering that beautiful voice uh, for the podcast, like episodes 12 and later, that this is the guy that did the outro. You know, this has been the Connecting to Spirit podcast. That's this guy. So, um, and uh, he's been an amazing individual. I think he's um, one of these people who will always be helping from this realm, any realm, and the pre-realm, and the post-realm, and all the realms. So, um, I don't know. God in his eyes. Maybe I'll call this podcast God in his eyes, or spirit in his eyes, or something. Anyway, we're riffing now, but thank you, thank you, thank you, and Bob, Bob Cross. So thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today, and to just share so openly. And we honor you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you back. This has been a Connecting to Spirit podcast with your host, Susan Norton. If you like what you heard, visit us at connectingtospirit.com forward slash podcast for more listening adventures. Blessings. Oh.